Spiral Abyss. The only endgame that Genshin Impact has to offer. Getting 36 stars in the Abyss is like a rite of passage, showing that you're capable of conquering the hardest content in the game. Last time I tried to do so and utterly time. failed, not even managing to get 3 stars in the first chamber on floor 12. However, when all hope was lost, Mona appeared. This Mona was huge for several reasons. She could immensely amplify my Hyperplume team's damage, and not only that, Sucrose could now be used in the other team. Now I do want to correct something uh, that I said last episode. Um, so if you look at Sucrose's passive, I said that you couldn't get EM from without swirling, which is actually not true. It only has to be her skill or burst that has to hit an opponent for you to get 20% of her elemental mastery. So she was working in the comp, technically. It's just that it also feels bad because I could have gotten 50 more EM from her A1 passive. But the passive I was talking about in the video was this one, and what I said was misinformation. So apologies, that was incorrect. After much deliberation, these were the teams I sell on. Lisa, Nahida, Mona, Kokomi, with Lisa triggering Hyper Bloom, and Nahida, Mona, Kokomi providing the Bloom cores to do so. And the second team is Klee, Yenfei, Heizo, and Sucrose, with Klee as the main DPS for the team, Yenfei using a Tank Fei build with Proto Amber equipped, and a lot of HP to buffer shield. Heizo is a solid sub DPS here, and Sucrose gives extra CC and VV Shred, and also has Thrilling Tales for the attack bonus. Thank you to the people who left comments regarding team building in the last video. I also noticed a lot of you wanted me to use Wanderer. The main reason why I'm not doing so is because I don't actually have access to his boss talent materials, which would make him significantly weaker than Klee or Yenfei or even Heizo. With the team set, the only thing left to do was to level up my recently gone Mona. Nahida and Lisa make this fight extremely easy. Also, you can dodge the damage from the water bombs by plunging into the water at the appropriate time. It's a fairly useful trick especially when you don't want to take damage from this thing. I leveled her all the way to 80 and raised her burst talent level to 8. After fiddling around with artifacts for a bit, I entered the Abyss. Floors 9 through 11 are pretty simple at this point, and my Klee was able to take out the Ruin monsters rather quickly despite having trouble on previous occasions. This is what stopped me last time. Getting 3 stars here would mean that my strength had grown and that 36 stars wasn't an impossibility. However, Due to my change up of the team rosters, I still wasn't completely fluent with using them yet. Eventually. Come a little closer. Try not Share my knowledge. Let me scry. Fate is upon you. Hold the line. You're in for a little shot. Hate that still hits. Come a little closer. You've been a naughty boy. Huh? Oh god, I didn't activate. Well, I didn't activate Koku's burst in time. Yes. Oh no. Come on, go. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be so good. So much damage. Right here. Oh, this is such a quick clear. Let's go. An 8.30? Easy. Okay, yeah, we're, we're three starting this chamber right now. Indeed. You're right. It is time to go to work. <laughs> Die. Oh my god. That's the most perfect clee. Oh, that was so perfect. Oh my god.
Yeah, can you just block the, uh, block the rocks for me real quick? Are you really appreciative? Uh-oh. No, no, no. Die! Yeah! Woohoo! With that display, I managed to three star Chamber 1. However, Chamber 2 was a difficult wall to overcome. The Golden Wolf Lord is by far one of the most annoying bosses in this game. The hitbox is awful, the time stall is awful, and don't get me started on the corrosion. To even finish this fight in time, I had to utilize Ningguang in the second half, regardless of who else I put there. That only left who to substitute out. I decided to let go of Sucrose and the Klee team as CC wasn't terribly helpful against an at loss enemy. I've always despised this boss due to its inconsistent hitbox. Fighting it on this account gave me another reason to dislike it. No, dude! How does it keep running into me, bro? Yep, I literally got rolled by this wolf on multiple occasions. I didn't even know it could do that much damage that quickly. Getting rolled that hard really drove me insane. <laughs> Several hours of insanity later, I came to the conclusion that I wasn't able to do enough damage to 3 star this chamber. My Klee was severely lacking damage. After inspecting my teams, I realized that Ningguang was holding the Favonius Codex. If I switched this out to Thrilling Tales, I could significantly amplify Klee's damage. This was my first attempt with this change. Push to the side. Kill. Oh, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. She dies before spawning the specter. Oh yeah. Let's go. So much time saved. percent attack bonus buddy you're not ready for this my thrilling tails will be the difference okay, come on Really huge, huge damage diff. Oh my god. Wait, this damage diff is huge. It's massive. Take him out! Yes! Let's go! Finally, the last obstacle left. One more to go. I was planning on taking my original teams into that chamber, but that meant fighting through all the other chambers. 
But Taurus, isn't the Golden Wolf Floor impossible to do without Geo? Well, not in the 3-star time limit. You can destroy the skulls without needing Geo, it just takes 35 elemental hits to do so! Luckily, Catalyst characters can do this pretty easily, but it still requires some crafty dodging. Did you know you can hide behind the spawn skulls and use it as a shield to protect you from oncoming projectiles? It's pretty nifty. After getting through the chambers I had defeated earlier, I encountered the KFC chicken, who also ran me over. Genshin really wants to isekai my character, huh? Yep, just a two-star clear. We're not gonna get more than that. Many hours have passed at this point, and no matter how much I tried, I couldn't three-star this chamber. With so much time invested and nothing to show for it, I became disillusioned and left the abyss. And quit. Well, with those teams. While Hyper Bloom teams are great for single target damage, the chicken is an anti Hyper Bloom boss with 80% dendro resistance. For reference, most enemies in the game have like 10% dendro resistance. This demon has 8 times that. So, I swapped sides. At first, I had some difficulty utilizing Klee against this chicken. However, I managed to keep reducing the time it took to finish the boss fight. Initially, I finished it in 2 minutes, but then I finished it in 1 minute and 45 seconds. Then, 1 minute and 40. Eventually, I was fairly comfortable with fighting the boss. However, the second half still posed an issue. Corrosion stacks even when you're in your burst animation, and Lisa didn't have enough electro application to pop all the bloom cores being spawned, causing me to take even more damage. Kokomi couldn't heal all the damage since the instructor side, but Honor didn't have enough HP stats. So, I left you the best to gather a few materials. I leveled Kokomi's E to 8, leveled the Throwing Tails I equipped on her to 90, and maxed my artifact levels. Hold up! Wait a minute! Yes, that's a 3 star artifact. I didn't have any other instructor goblets with HP percent on them, okay? After this, I headed back in. Oh yeah, I still have to go through this entire Wolf Lord nonsense again, because, you know, if you change your weapon and artifacts, it does not apply to the run that's already in logged into the Abyss, so you have to redo the entire thing. It's really great, you know? Uh -huh. While the Kokomi upgrades helped my survivability, I was still severely lacking in damage. However, with some nifty optimization, I was getting closer and closer. The issue still was that I had to do both sides practically perfectly, with very minimal losses in rotation and optimization. If I slipped on either side once, it was an immediate reset. Slowly, I found more ways to optimize the run, eventually cutting my dime down and finishing the chamber in 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Hmm, 10 seconds short though. There was only one thing that I could do in the situation with all the artifact juggling, talent leveling, team setups done. I just had to get good. I just had to perform. This was it.
829, that's my best time so far. It's over. I don't know if you can hear it, but my voice is shaking so hard right now. Oh my god. Oh. Let's go. Mmm. 50. That, those 50 primos taste so good. It's always the first clear that feels so momentous. I had done it. After 8 months of owning this account, I had finally fully cleared the abyss and pass the Rite of Passage. Now that it's all over, you're probably wondering what builds I put on my characters. So, let's start with the Hyperbloom team. This is my Elisa now. Weapons, Woodseth. Artifacts for Gilded. This is still a DPS set, but it's more geared towards ER because I noticed that her um, burst uptime was pretty bad. On so you can see one. Talents, eight, nine, and eight. Nahida. This is the same build from last episode. I haven't changed her at all. Some of you did say to use, um, what is it called? Um, magic guide, but I don't have an R5 magic guide, so R1 Mappa Mare is still better. Uh, for Deepwood. T0. Talents, 666. Mona. 240 ER. Like the major thing. Using a Fav Codex, of course. For Exile, because she'll generate enough energy for Lisa to burst. Constellation, C0, Talents, 1, 1, and 8. Kogami. Weapon is Throwing Tails, of course. Artifacts, 4 Piece Instructors. This is actually a really huge damage buff to my entire team. It's effectively how much EM Sucrose was giving. So, it's pretty good. Constellation, also C0. Talents, 1, 8, and 6. Alright, and now, finally, the Klee team. Bombs, so heavy. This is my Klee setup right now. Weapon is Skyward Atlas. Artifacts, 4-piece Lava Walker. These are the stats on them. Constellation, C0. Talents, 10, 8, and 8. Yenfei. Like 26k HP, it's not bad, but it's not like the best it could be. Artifact, um, weapon is prototype Amber R4, made in beloved Ocean Heal Glim. <laughs> That's the side I put on her to just generate more healing. <laughs> and it's also like what I could get my hands on, so yeah, deal with it. <laughs> Constellation C4, talents 10, 10, and 9. Sucrose, build, weapon. Uh, throwing Tails, Artifacts, 4-piece VV, and these are the set pieces. Constellations, C1, Talents, 1, 2, and 2. Finally, Heizo, these are his stats. Weapon, Woodseth, Artifacts, I use the 2-piece uh, VV, 2-piece No Bless set. 
it honestly depended on chamber. Sometimes I used four piece VV, like when I had to use Ning Guang in chamber two. But aside from that, these were this were the artifacts, C5, and 6 11 11. Finally, Ning Guang's build. Um, I actually have the wrong weapon on her right now. I have a Fav Codex. Um, the build I used was involving the Sterling Tails. I had to switch it between Sucrose and Ningguang. Anyway, you can understand. And 4-piece, no bless. So, damn, huge damage buffs, you know? Constellation, C0. Talents, 1, 1, and 1. And of course, Barbara is just cheering in the background. <laughs> and that's it for the artifact builds. So, now you're probably wondering, what is the goal now? Right? What, what am I doing in the future? Well... This account is not going to end. I'm not ending the series just yet. We still have a lot to explore. Still haven't done the Sumeru quests yet. So we're just not done with this game by a long shot. And we still have to explore several islands in, in Azuma. <laughs> Imagine having a blackened out dragon spine though. <laughs> Even after 36 starring the abyss. What a meme. I'm gonna do some wishing on the standard banner because I have a couple wishes. All right, let's see what we get. If we get anything, we probably won't just considering we just got Mona, but you know, one can dream, right? One can dream for early pity. It's not realistic though. Oh, four star? Eh, expected honestly. Can't win them all, can you? What? Bruh. You've got to be joking me, right? <laughs> That's such a practical joke. Oh my god. Uh-huh. I don't know whether to call that lucky or unlucky. Maybe a combination of the two.